The future king Edward VII was born on the 9th of November 1841, less than a year after his elder sister Victoria was born. He was named Albert after his father, but nicknamed Bertie. Though a second child, as a boy, Bertie was heir to the throne of the United Kingdom. His parents wanted to give him the best education possible as the heir, and his father took a particular interest in young Bertie's studies. Bertie was not academically inclined, but was quite charming, something that would help him later in life. Due to this, his parents were disappointed, and this feeling of failure caused Bertie to become withdrawn. At 19, Bertie toured North America with much success. He laid a stone on Parliament Hill, watched a tightrope walker walk across Niagara Falls, and he stayed with President Buchanan in the White House. This trip opened his mind to a new way of life, and he greatly enjoyed it. He returned to Britain, exhilarated and more confident in his abilities than ever before. His new confidence pushed him towards his greatest interest, women. As the Prince of Wales, Bertie was expected to marry and have children. His parents sent him to Germany in 1861 under the guise of watching military manoeuvres. On this trip, he met Princess Alexandra of Denmark, a princess who his parents were keen for him to marry. The two young people hit it off and it didn't take long before their families were arranging the wedding. However, there was just one snag in the plan. Bertie was already romancing and seducing other women. Before he travelled to Germany, Bertie had been in Ireland to gain military experience. When his friends discovered he had never been with a woman, the men snuck an actress into the camp called Nellie Clifton and Nellie would be the first of many women who would sleep with the future king. Rumours of his dalliances got back to his parents and his father travelled to Ireland to scold and warn his son of the harm that Bertie was causing. By this time in November 1861, Bertie's father's health had begun to fail and only weeks later, Prince Albert was dead. The death of Prince Albert sparked a hatred in Victoria so deep that she blamed Bertie for his father's death and never forgave him. The wedding between Bertie and Alexandra was postponed until the 10th of March 1863. Bertie married the princess as his father had wished, but he was not going to be faithful to his new wife. Their marriage vows were more of a guideline than a binding law. His infidelities earned him the nickname Dirty Bertie. His wife accepted his unfaithfulness, mostly ignoring it as most Victorian women did in those days. It is believed that Edward VII had at least 55 mistresses throughout his life. However, he never acknowledged any illegitimate children. He was either the most careful man alive, or he was lying about the consequences of his lovemaking. His mother's disapproval of her eldest son only grew when in 1869 Bertie was involved in a divorce scandal. Sir Charles Mordaunt, a member of Parliament, planned to divorce his wife, and was planning to name Bertie as a contributing factor. Evidence of an affair came in the form of letters that the Prince of Wales had written to Mordaunt's wife and the husband finding the two together alone in Mordaunt's house. Though Bertie was not listed as a reason for the divorce in the official documents, rumours and gossip spread, proving that Bertie was the cause of the marriage breakdown. His reputation was damaged. However, this didn't last long and Bertie was once again popular for his charisma and entertaining stories. His popularity grew when in 1871 he caught typhoid fever, the same illness that was rumoured to have killed his father. He survived and the people grew to love him more. The public believed him to be a kind soul as he always treated everyone with respect no matter class or colour. 
His letters revealed that he was disgusted by racism and his remarks were completely against the thinking of the time. Ed of the time in more ways than one, Bertie was a fashion icon for men. He shaped European style, wearing tweed suits, humber hats and Norfolk jackets. At black tie events, he wore a simple black tie instead of the white ties and tails, a tradition which has stuck to this day. If you thought Bertie's affairs were over, you would be mistaken. While he was able to keep most of his affairs under wraps, Bertie would slip up again. In 1877, while at the theatre, a young actress caught his eye, called Lily Langtry. He pursued her, even though she was married. At the dinner party afterwards, Bertie charmed Lily and they hit it off. It wasn't long before she ended up in bed with him and the couple became gossip in Victorian London. The affair continued for three years but came to an end when Lily became pregnant. They continued to have a strong friendship for years afterwards. Historians believe that Bertie was not the father as Lily was also sleeping with other men at the time. Though the heir to the British throne, Bertie's mother refused to allow him to partake in any state business. She did not trust him with state affairs and as a result Bertie spent much of his time partying in Paris and spending much of his time in brothels. Second to his love of women came his love of food. His wife's line had grown so much that it was intruding on his bedroom antics and he had a love chair made so it would be easier for him to keep up with his favourite hobby. Despite being perpetually unfaithful to his wife, Bertie and Alexandra had six children, Albert Victor, George, Louise, Victoria, Maud and Alexander John. Their sixth and final child, Alexander John, passed away just a day after he was born, leaving the couple devastated. As they laid their son to rest in his tiny casket, Bertie reportedly had tears rolling down his cheeks. Bertie managed to stay away from too many scandals until 1890 when he attended a baccarat game that was attended by many upper class members of society. However, this game was highly illegal and during the game the host Arthur Wilson caught Sir William Gordon Cumming cheating. This scandal would rock the royal family for years. Bertie was called as a witness in court for the cheating. Gordon Cumming was found guilty and Bertie's reputation took a massive hit. The death of his eldest son, Albert Victor, in 1892 would bring Bertie and his mother closer together. He wrote to his mother of the devastation the death of his eldest son brought him and that he would have given his life in favour of his sons. Eventually, Queen Victoria passed away on the 22nd of January 1901 at the age of 81 and Bertie became the king at 59 years of age. He took the regnal name of Edward VII. During the 1890s, Bertie was allowed to view state papers in secret, given to him by cabinet, something his mother was not aware of. Before Bertie's coronation, he suffered from appendicitis and had to have his appendix removed. The surgery was a success and it popularised the treatment. His coronation was held on the 9th of August 1902. At his coronation, Bertie invited some of his mistresses and this earned him a new nickname, Edward the Caresser. Despite his awful nicknames, Bertie was popular and the public loved him. His mother's reign had been gloomy after the death of her husband. Bertie's reign was one that lifted that gloom. However, he would only reign for just under 10 years. By 1909 his health started to decline and on one occasion he even fainted during a state visit to Berlin. His health failed at the worst time as the government was in crisis and needed their monarch to be strong. A liberal government had been elected but the conservative House of Lords vetoed everything the government passed. The king worked until the end and was a good monarch despite what his mother had believed him to be.
On the 6th of May 1910, he suffered several heart attacks and died later that night. Before he died, his mistress, Alice Keppel, visited the king. Bertie's wife allowed her to do so. After the king died, Alexandra refused to allow anyone to move Bertie's body for days afterwards. On the 11th of May, Alexandra finally allowed his body to be dressed and moved. His coffin was moved on the 14th of May to the throne room, where it lay in state. Three days later, his coffin was moved to Westminster Hall and the royal family attended a brief service. The hall was then opened to the public and over 400,000 people filed past the coffin. On the 20th of May 1910, the King's coffin was moved from London to Windsor Castle and buried at St George's Chapel. George V was born on the 3rd of June 1865 in London. He was the second son of Edward VII and Queen Alexandra, the then Prince and Princess of Wales. He was a grandchild of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom through his father and Christian IX of Denmark through his mother. As the second son, George was never expected to one day be king. George and his older brother, Albert Victor, were educated together, and neither of them excelled academically. At the age of 12, George and Albert Victor began training in the Navy, and from 1879, both of the brothers served on HMS Bacant. They toured the British Empire together. Unable to speak French or German, their grandmother, Queen Victoria, sent them to La Seine, which resulted in very little learning of either language. As an adult, George continued to work in the Navy, serving under his uncle, Prince Alfred. While stationed in Malta, he fell in love with his cousin, Princess Marie of Edinburgh. Their mothers disliked the match. Alexandra thought the family too pro-German, and Marie's mother disliked England. Marie refused George and instead married Ferdinand, the future king of Romania. In 1891, Albert Victor proposed to Princess Victoria Mary of Tech, more commonly known as Mary. But six weeks later, in January 1892, Albert Victor died of pneumonia, caused by influenza. George was thrust into the second in the line of succession. Queen Victoria pushed her grandchild to propose to Mary. George and Mary grew closer together during their shared mourning and in 1893 George proposed. Mary accepted. That same year on the 6th of July 1893 George and Mary were wed. They remained devoted to each other, never being unfaithful. George was unable to express how he felt in speech but he wrote many letters to his wife, as did she, expressing their devotion and love for each other. George's career in the Navy ended when he became second in line. He was given the title of Duke of York in 1892 and began to receive constitutional history lessons. George and Mary would go on to have five sons and a daughter together. He and Mary were strict and distant with their children not much different to how royalty raised their children at the time. They lived in York Cottage on the Sandringham Estate and led a simple, quiet life. On the 22nd of January 1901, Queen Victoria passed away and George's father ascended the throne. George was then given the title of Prince of Wales and toured the British Empire with his wife. As Prince of Wales, George was given access to state documents, unlike how his father had been when he was Prince of Wales, and George also allowed his wife to read the papers. He valued her advice and she helped him to write speeches. George supported reforms in naval training, with cadets being enrolled at the age of 12 and receiving the same education, regardless of class. These reforms were eventually implemented. On the 6th of May 1910, Edward VII died and George became king. He took the regnal name of George V. George took offence to the anti-Catholic wording of the Ascension Declaration that he was supposed to make during the opening of Parliament. 
He refused to open Parliament unless the offensive phrases were changed, and the Ascension Declaration Act of 1910 was passed, which removed the phrases. On the 22nd of June, 1911, George and Mary were crowned together at Westminster Abbey. That same year, they travelled to India for the Delhi Durbar, where they were crowned Emperor and Empress of India. He was the only Emperor of India to actually be present at his own Delhi Durbar. While in India, he expressed disgust at the racial segregation. When George came to the throne, the people's budget had been rejected by the House of Lords, which was unusual as Lords normally did not veto budget bills. The Prime Minister attempted to reduce the power of the Lords, but it kept being blocked. The Prime Minister asked George to grant another general election and to create sufficient Liberal peers if the Lords blocked legislation again. George agreed to the dissolution and the Parliament Act of 1911 was passed which removed the power of the Lords to veto bills. On the 4th of August 1914, World War I began. Britain and its allies were at war with the German Empire and its allies. George and his family were cousins of the German Kaiser and bore German titles. In a response to the growing anti-German sentiment at the time, George changed the Royal House's surname to Windsor in 1917 and all of his British relatives relinquished their German titles. He gave his male relatives British peerages and titles. That same year he restricted who could have the style of Royal Highness and who could have the title of Prince or Princess. By 1919 any of George's relatives who had fought on the German side of the war had their British peerages and titles revoked. In 1917, George's first cousin, Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, was overthrown in the Russian Revolution. George initially decided to grant his cousins asylum, but revoked his offer after fears of revolution being sparked in the UK. The Tsar, his wife and children were murdered in 1918. George sent a British warship to Russia to rescue the extended members of the Russian imperial family. Two months after the end of the First World War, Prince John, the King's youngest son, died at the age of 13 from an epileptic fit. His death caused immense grief for both of his parents. From 1932, George began to deliver a royal Christmas speech on the radio. He would continue this every year. By 1935, after 25 years on the throne, George was much loved by the British people. George's relationship with his heir Edward, or David as he was called in the family, deteriorated as the years went on. George was disappointed that Edward had failed to settle down and start a family. He was appalled by his affairs with married women also. In stark contrast, he was fond of Albert, his second son, who had married and had two daughters who George doted on. George's health began to suffer as he aged. He smoked heavily and by 1935 he was also taking oxygen. The death of his sister Victoria in December 1935 affected him. He became depressed and this weakened his already poor health. From the middle of January 1936, he grew weaker and drifted in and out of consciousness. On the 20th of January 1936, the king's doctor administered a lethal dose of morphine and cocaine to the king to put him out of his suffering. The royal family were not aware of his actions and the cause of the king's death did not come to light until the 1980s when the doctor's diaries were published. George's eldest son, Edward, succeeded as Edward VIII, but abdicated by the end of the year in favour of Albert, who ascended the throne as George VI. 